Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Um, so today I decided we're just going to do some kind of doodling. It's not going to necessarily be patterns. So we're going to start out by drawing a line here, just, like, just any size line that you want. And we're going to draw a stem. So you're going to go up and kind of arch, maybe direction, whatever direction you want. And then you're going to end a little teardrop to the end of that. And I'm going to divide this stem into five. So I'm just going to put a little dot. Two, three, four, and one more. Because you want to think in odd numbers. So the top two are going to be little leaf shapes, just like what's on the end. The third one will be leaf shapes, as well as the fifth one. So you can go down the side like I'm doing here, or you can just do them both together. It's up to you how your, your brain works best. All right, so the bottom one, these bottom leaves should be a little bit bigger or longer than the leaves at the top. So this one here, I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna make that dot a little bigger and then kind of do like a little frond thing with some circles. So the big, this one here is big and then the next one's a little bit smaller and then a little bit smaller and they just end up being dots towards the end so they should kind of fade out as they get to the fifth one. Now I use five, I draw four on each side because the center one is five. So let's do another one here. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. This one I'm going to do only three on because it's shorter. I'm not sure what's up with my uh, focus here. I'm sorry about that. So I'm, again I'm going to do the first one with a little leaf shape on it. And skip the second one and then do the third one with a little bit bigger leaves here. I'm gonna go back and make that thicker there and then get smaller as I go out. So there's one, two, three, four on each side, and then the center one is the fifth one. So you like to want to think in odd numbers. Your brain loves odd numbers. It likes symmetry, but it likes one in the middle and then an even number on each side. So it just seems to be more appealing. It's like a psych psychological study somebody did and uh, discovered that they like odd numbers better. Right. So then, and of course you can you can dress these up however you want. You can add you know, little details to it. I think I'll do one more and then I'll add a little swirl or something inside it. So again, there's only four dots, so there are a total of five on each side. Do one more here on the end. You can draw as many of these as you want. If you want to draw more, you can certainly pause the video and just keep going. It's up to you. Remember, these bottom leaves should be a little bit fatter, a little bit longer. And then you can just kind of doodle in here. Have little swirly pieces, whatever, whatever you want. I mean, I know it doesn't really make sense to put them there, but you can certainly draw this however you want. Make it whatever you want. Maybe add a little flower, or leave a flower at the end. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. All right. So for the next one, I'm going to switch to a pencil very briefly. Um, this is the only section that you're going to kind of want to make sure that you have somewhat straight, unless of course you want to make a wonky fence. So this bottom line here is the bottom of the fence. The top line is the top of the planks. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So I know it's hard to see on the video, but this one's not really straight here. I'm going to fix mine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like, you don't have to get a ruler, but just try to make it as straight as you can. Now I'm going to switch back to the pen. And I'm going to draw probably seven little dashes here. Let's see how many I can fit. There should be a small gap in between, and the dashes should be about the same uh, length. Perfect. All right, now I'm going to turn my, my paper and I'm going to draw a line from the end of each plank on each side, or on each uh, dash, excuse me, to the top of the pencil line here. Which, again, try to get them somewhat straight. I mean, they don't have to be perfect. And of course, if you have like a, you know, old barn wood fence or something and yours are just really wonky, then go with that. I'm sorry, my focus is having issues today. All right, so there we go. So now I'm going to put the little triangle tops on the tops of my picket pieces. So it should be right in the middle. So if you kind of eyeball it, it doesn't have to be perfect. About the same height as the previous one. You might get one in there that's a little wonky like that one. It's okay, just keep going with it. And of course, this is above the pencil line. So the pencil line is where the lines end. 
and then this is above the pencil line. So now we're going to draw the pieces that go behind the actual um, lateral pieces. You're going to start maybe, I don't know, it's like a quarter inch from that pencil line. And make sure you just draw it in those blank spaces, because obviously it goes behind. So of course you can make this very long, you can make it very short. You can have this as a breaker piece between some designs, or as a center, you know, medallion type of thing to draw some interest to a certain section. So the distance there is the distance I want to come up from the bottom here. So it's about another quarter inch from the bottom. So you can you can really play with this and have a good time. You can uh, again make it really small and kind of go around the border. You can actually use this as a, a fill if you want to, like a fill in a section. So it's up to you. All right. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to put the little nail holes on. This is optional. You don't have to do this part. I kind of like how it looks. But again, it's optional. All right, so now we're gonna add a little detail to the blanks. So on the right side of the top peak, I'm gonna just thicken that up. So, budget, you know, it doesn't have to be a huge amount. Um, you certainly can just draw the line and then fill it in however you want. Um, I'm just gonna make mine thicker to create kind of a little shadow. So it should be on the right side of the peak and on the right side of the plank. Of course, you can do it on the left side. Just make sure that you stay consistent. I think I'm actually going to jump to the bigger marker here after this one. I don't tend to keep my lines very straight uh, when I'm... Yep, I'm going to switch. So I don't keep my lines very straight when I am trying to do a really skinny, when they're really close together. I'm just not... I just... Uh, I think I tense up too much. I don't know. So that works a little better. So it's just a line off the edge and then down. Alright, so now we are going to add the detail as well to the lateral pieces. So this is going to be on the top edge, so I'm just going to thicken up that top line the same I did for the planks. And of course it's behind, so you just draw that little dash right on top. And then do the same for the bottom here. Something like that. Just adds a little 3D detail to it. So now you can dress this up however you want. You can do kind of a wood pattern, like add a little knot to it, and then draw some little wonky, wavy, dashed, you know, thin, thick lines to create that wood look. Um, we did this on a, a previous one where we drew some wood panels um, in a previous class, so it's kind of the same, same uh, concept. You don't have to. This is completely optional. You can just have a white paint fence, or you can draw flowers or whatever it is that you want across there. It's, it's entirely up. You can add flowers to the bottom of it. Um, anything like that is fine. All right, so we'll go on to pattern number three. I'm just going to draw kind of an arched line across here. And of course, my pen doesn't work very well, so I'm going to touch that up because I do want it to be kind of a solid line. Yours does not have to be arched. You can just draw a straight line. It does not have to be this long. So now we're going to add a scalloped edge. It should come down pretty close to the line, but not touch it. Your scallops can be different heights, different thicknesses, uh, as far as width goes. They should just kind of bubble. You can have them all be uniform if that's the look you want to go for. That's totally fine. So this um, piece here, it shouldn't be. they should be kind of close to the line, like I said. Now I'm going to draw the shadows, and that's, this is just a little thickening um, on the right side of each one. So it just comes off the top and gets a little bit thicker as it goes down. This is kind of annoying with the Sharpie because um, the Sharpie tends to bleed a little bit more than a regular pen. Um, so I keep having to go back. You can see a little bubble at the top of mine or a little, I call them a bleed point. I don't know what they're actually called, but it's like a little blob. So you, you may not have that problem, which is, is great. So it should just come off the top and get thicker as it goes down towards the line. It should be on the same side, so if you pick the left side, that's fine. I chose the right because that's how I tilt my head, so it's easier for me to see when I'm drawing.
Alright, so now I'm going to add the inside detail. So it's just going to be a little bit of a dash line here. I'm going to do the dash all the way across because that way I can make sure that the bottom lines of these interior outlines are um, kind of straight across. I want them to be at the same height. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to add an arch in each one. So you don't understand by it. I know it's an outline, but it's an interior outline. So it, it traces the outside lines. You should not touch the outside lines. They're just a little, a little detail on the inside here. It's, it's okay if they're not perfectly matching the lines that are on the outside. You can just, just want that little detail. So now we're going to add the same shadow line, but on the inside. So I'm going to go on the left side. And I'm going to just kind of draw a little wedge shape here and then fill it in. So start at the top, come down a little bit wider at the bottom, and add that little detail there. Alright, so now you can actually double this up if you want to. This is completely optional. Um, you can add things below here that are something separate. Oops, I shouldn't touch the line there. Um, and these bubbles, if you decide to double that up, the bubbles on the bottom do not have to match the bubbles on the top. They can be completely separate. Uh, again, this is optional. I'm just going to do it really quickly to show you what it looks like. Um, but it's, the process is exactly the same. I'm going to skip the shadowing part because you obviously know how to do that. That one there is not a good one, so ignore that one. And then uh, I'll just continue on with the same inside piece, just to give you kind of a peek of what it will look like. So again, you put the shadowing on there, it would look really, really neat, but it's not its not uh, required. So now the last one we're going to do is just kind of a silly one. Uh, I'm going to draw some birds. So I'm going to draw a big bird here. This is just a really easy way to draw a bird. You start it with kind of a peanut shape. So I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to blob it out towards the bottom, come back up, and then skinny at the top. So you have kind of this weird peanut shape. And then you put a little beak on, some eyeballs, some little stick legs. And you can add some wings in here as well, um, just by kind of drawing a line from the armpit down and the armpit down. You can make these birds as silly or as, as, as simple as you'd like. You can go big detail, little detail. Um, you, obviously, you can change the size of the birds. You can make them really big. You can make them really skinny. You can make them a little bit more wonky. It's up to you how you do it. So you might want to practice a couple birds just before you do it and decide how you want to draw it. Um, you can actually just draw kind of an oval shape with some legs and a beak, and that would be totally fine. So you can give your guy a mohawk like I just did. I don't know, whatever it is you want to draw. So I'm going to start by drawing um, a bowed line, so kind of imagine like a bowed um, power line. You can draw them straight across if you want to, to kind of X them however you want. Um, I've never seen power lines cross like that, but it does it in illustrations for some reason. So um, I'm going to put my biggest bird right in the middle because that's where the lowest point of my line is. So I'm going to draw my big bird here and then um, I'm going to draw a whole bunch of little birds on the side. And again, they're going to be some are turned. You can just have a, a lot of fun with this. This is something that you can put in a, you can actually use this in a fill section. So you can, uh, you know, if you have a big area that you don't really want to take the time to put a big pattern in there, just draw a couple of arch lines and stick some birds on there and be silly. You know, whatever it is that you want. Um, or you can actually like draw some telephone lines on the sides and actually make this between, or you know, like a, a clothesline. You can add some clothes underneath here like they're hanging on the clothesline or whatever it is that you want. Just have a, a good time with it.
All right, so I'm gonna stop there. I have my five birds. Don't forget you can do any kind of a fill. You can have the birds sit anywhere on those lines that you want to do. I do hope that you enjoyed these silly patterns for today. And if you do want to join the class live, it is every Thursday from 5.30 to 6.30 in the library. And you do have to call to register for that class there. They don't accept walk-ins so that we can make sure that we have everything set up. So um, I hope that you have a wonderful day and thanks for drawing with me.